God damn, he looks good in that new Mind Seed TV apparel. I feel good too. We have been up all night, every night, creating this website for you guys. Been ordering piece after piece after piece of this apparel just to try to make sure that it all looks good when it gets to you guys. And also right now, I'm gonna be giving out $20, $50 gift cards to you guys for our merchandise store. All you have to do is go over to mindctv.com, sign up for our email subscriber list, find an item that you like, drop it in the cart, and then click the chat with us button and type in gift card. We got the Mind Seed apparel, but not only do we have the Mind Seed stuff, we have awesome streetwear in there. We have episode collector sets, all of your favorite episodes thrown into t-shirts. We actually have them on coffee mugs and the coffee mug collection looks sick. I'm not even going to lie. And how could I ever forget to mention that we have mystery boxes now. All you have to do is select your size for your apparel. And once you select your size, a bunch of awesome items will be shipped to you. And the one thing that we guarantee is that whatever is in the mystery box, you will have more than $100 worth of value inside that box super cool so i'm gonna let you guys get back to the episode thank you so much for tuning in we have been working so hard and we're trying to bring you as much content as possible i will make more of an effort to get on here talk to you let you know what's going on on the camera mano y mano colton hit them in the comments and tell them we ain't playing bro i'm heather grimmer and i am the owner of the western block complex Over 170,000 square feet for us to investigate. She did say she gets a strange feeling in the barn, right? That's what she said. Oh yeah, look, there it is. It has been very many uh, investigations publicly that uh, people haven't had some type of personal experience. I saw this flash. Something like fucking pinched the fuck out of me. Fuck. There's spiders everywhere in here though. One, two. And what we do is we play a kind of a counting game. We get everybody to count one through three, four, five. Three, four, five. Hello, hello. Do you not like it? Nah. -uh. Dude. So the Block Factory was actually a really cool location that we got to check out. We're talking about over 170,000 square feet for us to investigate. The owners were actually cool enough again to give us an interview and tell us a little bit about the history of the location and here's what they had to say. I'm Heather Grimmer and I am the owner of the Western Block Complex, which is now an arts and cultural center. My name is Frank Kupka. I'm from Buffalo Fan Hunters. I work with Heather, who is the owner of Western Black. We do paranormal investigations here, uh, privately and publicly. This property has been known to be haunted. Many people go there to investigate, to try to collect paranormal evidence. Whether it's uh, voices, footsteps, uh, seeing shadows, hearing things, um, being touched, uh, having their hair pulled. There has been very many uh, investigations publicly that uh, people haven't had some type of personal experience. Portions of the building are no longer in use. There were a lot of injuries just uh, from this being part of a factory. Kids would work on machinery here because they were tiny and they could get into, you know, fix the little tiny parts that they could access and the adults couldn't and there were injuries with that. There's a hallway that we sit in. We like to call it our shadow hallway. We just sit in the dark and watch down the end and you can see uh, people walking back and forth or at least shadows walking back and forth underneath um, in the faint light. We were doing a public investigation and they were showing them uh, the EMF detector on the um, electric panel. I happened to turn and look through the, uh, the doorway and I saw a shadow go across the wall. I was you know, caught off guard a little bit, wasn't scared or anything like that, but uh, I thought it was Heather coming up through the back stairwell. So I went in and investigated and no Heather, there was no person in the room. So when I came back out and I saw her coming up the stairs, I had asked her if she uh, is in that room for any reason. She said, no, I was locking up downstairs. And I said, well, this is what I encountered. So if you can check your security camera later and let me know what happened. And uh, lo and behold, she sent me the four second video clip of the, the woman getting caught on security camera. And my personal experience was confirmed and I was very happy with that. 
there is the spirit of a little boy in the, in the room behind us, and he projects himself to be much bigger. People have said that in our investigations that they've seen the figure of a child, whether it's a male or female, they're, they don't know, but darting in and out under the table, that kind of thing. He just kind of keeps his, keeps his distance, but, uh, but right now we know he goes by Tiny. He responds to Tiny? As far as we know, yes. Alright, you know what I'm thinking, right? The first thing that we gotta check uh -huh. is the basement that hasn't been open for seven years. There was a basement below a barn. Now, the barn has been known to have a lot of activity in it, but the basement, we were told, nobody has gone in there in over seven years. She told us the door was overgrown, but you know, you know we gotta see what's in there. Oh yeah. So, we're gonna be the first people going in this door in a very long time. Like, right look behind at the, the car, look at this. And this car has been here for years, look at the tires. You could see that there was weeds and vines growing all over the door. Am I going first? Um, I guess so, huh? I mean, yeah. Alright, what's, what's going on with the lot? It's got overgrowth, it's got vines growing through it. You'd imagine that something, something live might be residing in it. Oh, my fucking flashlight started flickering. Huh? My flashlight started flickering as soon as I walked in here. No way. Yeah. It's really not much to see in here. Really? It's just a room with a barrel. It was a very small room. Didn't feel like there was anything too strange down there except for a lot of spiders. Fuck. There's spiders everywhere in here, though. Is there really? Yeah. What's in there? Some drum full of spiders? Spider eggs. Yeah. Let me just do a quick so you can trade you the lock here. Alright. I really don't want to get any of these fucking weird ass spiders on me. You gotta be careful though. Is there anything present down here? My flashlight did flicker as soon as I walked in. Can you light up this EMF detector in my hand? Can you come close to us if there's something present? Looks like you're trying to move the needle a little bit. Can you come close? Okay, it's going green here. And then this way is showing me a little bit of yellow. No way. And it's just not going off? It's, it's going, it wants, to, it wants to hit yellow. Someone just fucking bit me in the arm. When we open the door and I walk inside, I started taking notice of all these cobwebs and all these other spider webs, but something like under my shirt felt like almost a, a sharp pinch. Some pinching? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right in my tricep. I don't see nothing on you. Like fucking like, it just happened. Really? Like a needle prick or something. It felt like... Like some something pinched you? I don't know. It was sharper than a pinch, but not like teeth. Colton felt something pinch his arm, but we don't know. Something bit him. We don't know if that was paranormal or not. Um, but we decided that it was too dirty, too musty. Let's get out of here. Yeah, there's plenty more places yeah. that are interesting room, but shit. One, two, three, go. I'm like fucking pinch the fuck out of me. She did say she gets 
Strange feeling in the barn, right? That's what she said. This is the barn here. So we were just down below in the barn. Let's see, we got spider webs everywhere. You have one trailing off, just drugged down here. Get, get this shit off me, dog. You good? This is this is a weird room. Oh, a big ass web right there. Also, they had mentioned an uh, entity that they made contact with named Tiny. Yeah, Tiny. I heard that you've been casting some shadows in here that are very peculiar. We started doing some testing in the barn. We were told that when you keep your lights low, keep lights dim, that's when people usually see the most shadow figures. Lower your light. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna bump my eyes with then. Tiny, can you walk around this room with us right now? Can you show us that you're present? What the fuck is showing up on your camera? You see it? Yeah, that right corner. The corner over here? Yeah. Did you hear that? Yep. My camera's flickering too. Are you seeing it? Yeah, it's like about a knee high. But it keeps like flickering. Yeah, something over here in that corner right yeah. there. It seemed like there was a shadow of some sort in the corner of the room just playing with our eyes. It was kind of hard to tell because it was so dark in there, but our eyes were definitely picking up something moving in the corner of that room. And my camera's flickering too. Are you seeing it? Yeah, it's like about a knee high. But it keeps like light. flickering, yeah. Something over here, in that corner right yeah. there. It was about maybe between knee and hip height. And it was like becoming more solid and then more transparent and more solid and more transparent. Tiny, is that you? I'm blasting light like almost directly at it right now. Tiny, I'm gonna bring the EMF detector over to that corner. Please don't be afraid. And if that was you in that corner, can you light up that EMF detector for us? We definitely see movement. Tiny, we keep seeing a shadow over there in the corner. Can you please come close to that EMF detector and light it up? If you get near it, it'll start blinking. It's kind of like a toy. We heard that you're a child, so if you like toys, you can play with that. It won't hurt you. It's fun. It just starts to blink and makes a little beeping noise. You want to try it? Come on, Tiny. Keep looking. It was here, right? Was this the door? I think we were. I mean, we walked straight out of there and she told us this was. Oh yeah, look, there it is. What? The garage? Casey and I walked into like this old auto body garage. There's probably 20 to 30 cars down there. Just a bunch of old, rusty, broken vehicles with a big giant sliding bay door propped open into the back barbed wired off kind of like yard area.
Hello? Hello? Is anybody here? Can you communicate with us? Can you light up this device in my hand? Hmm. Don't walk under the ladder. Where is it at? Oh, you see that? What? See my flashlight? Start flickering? Uh-uh. Huh. I mean, it's not like it's an expensive flashlight or nothing, but still, light flickers are kind of strange. If you're present here with us right now, please let yourself be known. This place is fucking eerie. Yeah, it is. It's dead silent. We should run a test here. I'm gonna try another light spectrum. Blow some red so we can see if something moves. We were told that there's like shadow figures that appear in there. We decided to do a yes, no prism. When we're in there, it's desolate silence again. There's no road noise. This area is like got no, there's no sidewalk traffic. There's no road traffic, anything going by. If there's a presence here with us, that goes by the name of Tiny. Can you please come close to this device? I'm Colton, this is Casey. Our buddy Frank says that he communicates with someone by the name of Tiny. Can you come close to this device? On Casey's side, it'll light up green for yes. On my side, it'll light up red. If you'll come near it at all, so it'll light it up. Let us know that you know how it works. Him and I begin to hear little ticks and knocks and little scratches. This is obviously a very active area. We would hear that. I did hear that. Something like tapped on the car. This is obviously a very active area. We would hear that. I did hear that. Something like tapped on the car. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. If that was you, can you light up the red side of this device? If you can, that would be amazing. That would let us know for sure that you're here right now. I feel hella weird with that big ass door stuck open behind us. And what we do is we play a kind of a counting game. We get everybody to count one through three, four, five, and we see if we can get the spirits to count back with us at six. A lot of times we'll get a six, sometimes we get seven, and we all know that spirits talk on frequency, so sometimes the spirits may, you may hear, you may, we may not hear the six, but somebody may say six and we just hear the seven. So um, a lot of people have, we have caught that with a lot of groups. You stop after five. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Oh, back wall. What happened? The only light that we have or what's projected on the wall that is our lights, I saw this flash. Oh, back wall. It was like a dark, like a dark fog or figure just across the light wall. Oh, back wall. Colton saw it a little bit more clear than I did, but when we look back at the playback of the footage, you could definitely see something moved past us on the wall. Across 
that shape that looks kind of like a like a chair thing. Um, if you're not oh, comfortable, what's up? What's that? Footsteps. I heard it. We can hear you. Can you come closer to us? Oh, it got cold. Feel that? No. No? It's still chilly. I just got really cold. He said yes. The yes no prism seemed to only light up when our backs were turned to it. I just got really cold. He said yes. Let's see it, Tiny. He said yes. Let's do it faster and let's stop at eight this time. Okay. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can you finish this for me? Want to keep moving? Yeah. Let's go to one of those long hallways where they get shadow figures. One of the owners, Frank, he had a custom spirit box built for him. And Colton and I love seeing these custom devices that are put together. We're infatuated by custom gear, especially anything that's original and engineered by someone to fulfill a purpose that they see is not fulfilled already. We asked Frank if he could set it up for us. He was staying in a property which was off the premise of the location while we were doing the investigation, but he was cool enough to come back into the property and set up the spirit box for us to do a test. But as soon as he turned it on, it said Frank. And Colton and I kind of looked at each other and we were like, what better of an opportunity to have somebody that the entities are familiar with sit and do an actual test with us? The second we turned the spirit box on, it said Frank. It, it yeah. basically yelled Frank's name. And since it's comfortable with you, would you mind no, waiting the session? No, I, mean, I, I, I like, I, you know, I use this box all the time. So. Okay. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna take turns asking questions? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, if there's somebody present with us right now, are you familiar with Frank? Do you know Frank personally? familiar with me from doing the investigations and being here all the time with Heather? Frank, mm -hmm. I heard you again. Yeah, I heard you again. Frank, mm -hmm. I heard you again. Now that we know that you know my name, can you tell us your name? Michael. Michael? Listen very close. Michael, did you work in the factory when I was the factory here? Seems like you're trying to come through. Can you use a little bit more energy to pronounce words more clearly? There's a ton of water running underneath this building. You can use energy from the water your voice. What is that, three? I heard a number. Ooh, a little like back Casey. there. Sounds like said my name. Your name back there. I did hear my name at one point, and it also said three multiple times. It said three a couple times, and there was three of us in the room. That's the ones that I pay attention to right there. So the there, there are three of us here. Mm. It said Frank before. It sounded like it said my name. Yeah. This is Colton. Can you say Colton? Colton, you want to introduce yourself? 
My name's Colton. Earlier we were talking, we thought we were talking to someone named Tiny. Kept answering yes to us. Whoa, got quiet there for a minute. Something said something. Yeah. Are you happy that Heather owns the building and that she's the boss? Would you consider yourself to be friends with Frank and Heather? There are all three of us. Are you comfortable with Heather and I and what we're doing here? Uh-oh. Speak your dad. Speak your dad. Seems like you're trying to come through. Can you use a little bit more energy to pronounce words more clearly? We're gonna run our spirit box for sure. Yeah, we'll run our spirit box in the studio 214. What's the number? What? Upstairs. 14, studio 14. Studio so it's 14. On top of the door. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. Well, thank you, yeah. Frank. Absolutely. Yeah, thank, thank you guys for letting me join in. That was oh, awesome. Yeah. So one thing that's really cool is there's a classroom upstairs where Frank actually had captured a woman walking by on one of the walls, and it was a shadow. A lot of people that see this footage try to recreate that shadow to see, okay, where would this person had to have been walking in order to cast a shadow on that particular wall? So Colton and I, we went in there and we tried to recreate that. All right, so this is the room that they actually captured a shadow figure passing by on this wall right here. To give you guys an idea of how you would have to walk over there, if somebody walked out of here like this, the shadow would come out facing almost the same direction. You can clearly see in the video, nobody came out of here. It was only a shadow on the wall. And then it disappeared, came down here somewhere, and everything over here got pixelated. So. That's really interesting because if somebody did cast that shadow, you would have seen them coming out of that hallway. Yeah, and just so people understand the reference of it too, it would have to be this level. It would have to be on this level. We're on the fucking third fucking floor. So it's impossible that that could have came from outside. Unexplainable, totally crazy looking, but we couldn't debunk that. There was one location at the end of a long hallway where we were told whenever they do group investigations there, people have claimed to have their hair pulled or feel like they've been choked or touched when they sit in front of this one particular door. There does seem to be someone that seems to be like agitated once in a while, but I think it more, it's more like a prankster kind of thing. It's not more, it's kind of trying to intimidate people just because it's there and it, it really doesn't, it works with some of the guests, but it doesn't work with Heather and I. Um, Again, we don't really, and it's not, it's not an ego thing, but it, you just, you get used to some things. You just don't get scared very often unless it's like right up on you, that kind of thing. So, okay. Hello, hello. Upstairs gallery. Oh, this is it right here. This is the room that they say people get touched sitting outside of this door right here. Try some something. Let's put a rim pod on it. So Colton and I set up in front of that door and we had three devices going all the way down this long hallway. We have three tests in this hallway. If you come close to any of them, it'll let us know that you're here with us. 
Come close to one of the devices. Show us that you're here. But we had the coffin music box down at the very end, which would start playing music if something got close to it. We had the yes, no prism in the middle of the hallway. And we also had the REM pod down at the end, which if something gets close to that, it'll light up, but it'll light up on one particular side of it. Don't be afraid. We believe you can do it. Be present. That's all you have to do. Didn't uh, Frank say that you provoked, well, not really provoked, but he yelled at it and got an answer once? Yeah. He said, don't fucking do that, like, because it touched yeah. Heather, right? So, yeah. Do you not like it when people are aggressive with you? I don't think you can move shit. I don't think you can fucking pull hair. I don't think you can do much of anything. Yeah, I personally think you're full of shit. I just saw something move down there too. No way. Yeah. I swear it looked like something moved. What is that? I don't know. Did you? You heard that. Did you leave? I left that door wide the fuck open. Nuh uh. Dude. This is literally where she was seen. Send him down there. Yeah. Like that. I'm not going down there. I'd rather do that. Check out his flashlight, dude. Now is not the time. It's got some trigger items on it. Also, the IR infrared cam here. That's where she said they would like dump bodies and shit back in the day. Hello? There's something at the end of the tunnel fucking looking at me, dude. Thank you guys so much for watching tonight's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned. We got part two coming up next week. It's going to be awesome. Don't forget to follow us on Patreon to support us if you enjoy what we do. You'll get episodes 24 hours early, no commercials, and you'll also get discounts to our store and other cool bonus footage. That's down in the description or up here in the top box that you can click. We are a self-funded channel. All the support helps that you guys are giving to us because we have tons more travels coming up and we are trying to go international soon. So everything that you guys do to support us, we appreciate so much. It helps in the long run. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more content.